Today on Know the Truth, a message of hope from Philip DeCourcy. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I won't want for peace, because he makes me lie down. I won't want for protection or comfort, because he's with me in the darkness. I won't want for provision, because he spreads a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23 describes safe pastures, still waters, and our good shepherd leading and guiding us through dark valleys. But the imagery isn't provided for mere sentimentality. This psalm shares the dependable care of God and the faithfulness of his peace and provision. That's what we're learning today on Know the Truth with Philip DeCourcy. We're being reminded that God has a plan to bring us to safety even through scary times and circumstances. And after the message, I'll tell you about a helpful and relevant resource on the same topic. Learn more at ktt.org. Here's Philip. God wants us to learn the art of living the business of life with adequacy. And that indeed is the inheritance of the child of God. This is a psalm written by David to us about Jesus. Now let's start to look at the psalm itself. There's several things I want us to see. Remember verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When that is said, all is said. Everything that comes after that, we move from the general to the specific. We actually get to see what the shepherd does. Here's the first thing. If you're taking notes, I hope you are. Get your Bible open, following along. The shepherd stills the sheep. The shepherd stills the sheep. He brings peace and a sense of security to the sheep. Look at verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. See, it goes without saying that a shepherd will find food and water and rest for his sheep. See, the image here is of sheep lying down in green pastures. And from what I can tell in my research, sheep will not lie down while they're hungry. And so here's the picture of the shepherd leading his sheep to grazing ground that satisfies their need. And they lie down satisfied and sufficiently fed and at peace. He makes them to lie down in green pastures and he leads them beside the still waters. Sheep will not lie down when they are hungry, but sheep will not drink water from a fast-flowing stream. But a good shepherd takes care of that. Knowing the sheep's fear and phobia and concern for running water and the threat that it poses, my research tells me that an eastern shepherd would often, one, with a staff, he would might dig a little channel off the side of the water, and then he would dig a little pool and the water would flow into the pool and be stilled, be still, be quiet. And the sheep would gather at the side of the water, but drinking stilled water. What a beautiful picture. That's the image. And yet God was able to provide peace for David. This was written by David to us about Jesus. What about Jesus in the midst of Galilee, in the midst of a storm, and the boat in which he's in, he's asleep at the back of the boat. His disciples are pulling on the oars. The seals are ripping a little in the winds. There's been a sudden storm that's come upon the Sea of Galilee. They're frightened. Jesus doesn't seem to be disturbed. They're disturbed that he's not disturbed. And so they waken him up and say, Lord, don't you care? And we read that he stands up and he says, to the wind and the waves, what? Be still. He can do that for you. God's peace is not having a life without storms. Let me say that again. God's peace is not having a life without storms. It's having Jesus in the boat who's able to bring peace in the midst of the storm. You know what? 1555, Nicholas Ridley, about to come another Protestant martyr. Well, the evening before his death, according to some of the records that I have read, his brother comes to his prison cell and offers to stay with him to keep vigil during the night And amazingly, Ridley says, no, thank you, but no. 
And he says this, I intend to sleep tonight as any other night. And he did. He slept that night like a child. And the next day he played the man and gave his life for the gospel. Well, my friend, God wants that for you. God's peace is not having a life without storms. But it is being in the company of the storm chaser, the Lord Jesus Christ. Before I leave that thought, I want to come back to it. See, remember in this picture, the shepherd leads the sheep beside stilled waters that haven't yet been stilled. Okay, keep this image in mind. He will maybe dig a channel. He maybe will create a pool. Or he maybe will build a small dam around the edge of the water. But when they're brought to the side of that river, that stream, it's still flowing. It's threatening. They haven't yet been stilled, but that water will be stilled. And the shepherd will make them rest beside stilled waters. And that environment that seems so threatening and so scary will become a means of rest and refreshment because the shepherd has a plan. I love that thought that that which threatens you right now, even the coronavirus, and it's this circumstance we're in is unpleasant and it's generating fear and maybe we're muttering it under our breath, all things work together for good, but we're not really b- believing it. We've got to believe it. The sheep were frightened, but the shepherd that brought them there would provide for them there and protect them there. We don't have time to turn here, but if you're taking notes, Why don't you write down Exodus 14, verses 1 to 2. That's the story of the people of Israel and the crossing of the Red Sea and the great miracle of the parting of the waters where Moses lifts the staff and says, you know, to the people of God, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. But I want you to understand, as that staff is lifted and that promise is made and that act of obedience and trust is asked for, The Red Sea is full, and behind them, there's a cloud of dust as the Egyptian army pursues them. And if you read Exodus 14, 1 to 2, you'll realize that God gave them specific directions to turn here and to turn there, and he brought them to the Red Sea. They had followed the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. It was God that brought them there, and there before them was the swelling of this massive body of water preventing their escape. Around them were mountains, and behind them was the Egyptian army. But I want to remind you that God brought them there. And the point I think of that tax would be when God brings us into a set of circumstances that seem threatening, God has a plan to get us out of that circumstance that seems so threatening. And you and I need to grasp that. We need to live in the good of that. Let me tell you a story behind a hymn. God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. That hymn was written by William Kuyper. In fact, his life is a sad one. He lost his mother when he was six. He had a broken relationship with his father. He was bullied at school. He was given to severe seasons of depression. He wondered if he had committed the unpardonable sin. He wondered if God had rejected him. On several occasions, he tried to take his life, and God in his marvelous providence had prevented. He comes to know Christ in the midst of all this darkness and in the midst of all this despair in a hospital. He was a frequent patient in hospitals and asylums. And one day he read Romans 3, 25, and he came to see that his redemption was to be found in redemption offered by Jesus Christ. And the clouds lifted to some degree, but even throughout his life, he still struggled. In fact, he kept company with a Calvinistic wing of the evangelical church. And though he didn't fully understand it, although he didn't always make sense of what God had done or allowed in his life, he came to this view that God's goodness and mercy had followed him all the days of his life. And that's why he wrote this hymn. God moves in mysterious ways. 
his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and he rides upon the storm. But I want you to notice a verse in this hymn that I think plays into this thought. Keep in mind we're thinking about stilled waters by rushing waters. Finding peace in the midst of a circumstance that continues to threaten. Finding peace in the experience of things that are scary and things that God seems to have allowed or had a direct hand in. Here's what William Kuyper says to fearful saints like that. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break with blessings on your head. It's beautiful. That's exactly the experience of the sheep. The water they so much dreaded, the shepherd used to bring blessing. And my friend, whatever circumstance you're in, but fearful saints fresh courage take. The clouds you so much dread will break with blessing on your head. So here's the first thought. The shepherd stills the sheep. For the time that remains, I've got one other thought this morning, and then we'll pick this up. The shepherd saves the sheep. Okay, verse 2, the shepherd stills the sheep. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And here's the next thought. He restores my soul. The shepherd saves the sheep. Another ministry of the shepherd is to rescue and restore fallen wayward sheep. That's just what shepherds do, don't they? And that's an image that we find throughout the Bible. Shepherds are often cast as those who are on a search and rescue mission. And then we find, and Jesus tells a story, doesn't he? Luke 15, 1 to 7, about a shepherd who had a 100 sheep, and he went out to find the one that was missing. You know, sheep have poor eyesight. Not only are they frightened of running water, they're directionless. They can put themselves into predicaments of great danger. They tend to go astray. Remember the little uh, nursery rhyme, little Bo Peep had lost her sheep and didn't know where to find them? And someone advised her, you know, leave them alone and they'll come home with their tails bobbing behind them. I've got two things to say about that nursery rhyme. Number one, little Bo Peep wasn't much of a shepherdess. And number two, whoever gave her that advice didn't know anything about sheep. Sheep don't come home. Sheep stray. In fact, dogs can come home. Pigeons can fly home. Cats can come home. There are certain breeds of animal that seem to have a homing instinct, okay? When I was growing up in Northern Ireland, some of my friends had pigeons, and they would go and race them many, many miles away from home, and then the pigeons would come home to the coop in the backyard. Amazing. Sheep don't do that. Sheep don't come home with their tails bobbing behind them. The shepherd's got to go and find them. The shepherd seeks the sheep. That's what our text is saying. Like a shepherd, God has restored my soul. A shepherd will do that. Again, in my research, reading material on Eastern shepherds and the shepherding world in general, sheep have a tendency to get lost. And then after a while, they recognize they're lost. It takes a while sometimes. They're feeling good in their freedom and their rebellion. But after a while, they come to realize it comes crashing down upon them. I'm lost and I'm in danger. And they begin to bleat and cry. And sheep will find a bush to hide beneath or a rock to hide beside. And at this point, they're in great peril because there's the stink of fear in the air. There's the noise of the sheep bleating in distress. And the other animal kingdom will come for a nice, tasty supper. But once the shepherd who knows his sheep by name finds that one of the hundreds missing, he'll go looking for it. And he'll often find it shivering beneath a rock or beside a hedge. And one of the books I read said, the sheep can be in such a state of trauma and panic that it's unable to walk. And so the loving shepherd lifts the sheep up and puts the sheep uh, across his shoulders and carries them home. That's one of the images of God, by the way, in the prophecy of Isaiah. How beautiful is that? In fact, one other thought, if there's a sheep that's a repeat offender, shepherds would often take that lamb, which is more the case, that hasn't been trained. The shepherd would deliberately break the leg 
of the lamb. He would then splinter that leg, and he would carry that lamb or that sheep on his shoulders for a while, making that sheep utterly dependent, breaking that sheep's will, bringing a greater relationship and bond between the shepherd and the sheep. Those are the images that lie behind this text. By the way, this text would be better read like this. He brings me back. That's the literal Hebrew. He restores my soul, or he brings me back. It's the idea of returning something to its original state of health or quality. My friend, as we kind of wrap up this morning, that's a beautiful picture. And with it comes wonderful hope because we are like straying sheep. We've already established that. All we like sheep have gone astray. In fact, the man that wrote this very psalm in another psalm, Psalm 51, acknowledges that he strayed and he strayed far. He was party to adultery. He was party to murder. And yet he came to know the mercy, the multiplied mercy of God. And in the midst of Psalm 51, I think it's verse 12, what does he say? Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And then transgressors will know your way. Lord, bring me back. Don't take your spirit from me. Bring me back to a place of intimacy and closeness where I know your smile and I enjoy your presence. Oh, my friends, we are like straying sheep. Morris Roberts said this, Christians cannot fall away, but they can fall far. Good men can lose great mercies through their falls. Some have lost their authority as witnesses of Christ. Some have eclipsed their reputations forever. Some have left ugly stains on otherwise bright ministries. Noah fell through strong drink. Lot through worldliness. Moses through impatience. Samson through women. David through lust. Hezekiah through arrogance. Zechariah through unbelief. And David through self-confidence. The list does not end there. History shows that the good and even the great are liable to sad lapses. We're like the strange sheep. But the Lord Jesus is like the loving shepherd. See, it was written by David to us about Jesus. He tells the story on himself in Luke 15, 1 to 7. He's the good shepherd that goes and finds the stray sheep and brings them home with great rejoicing. John 10, verses 11 to 15, he's the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus loves to rescue the sinning unbeliever, and Jesus is quick to restore the sinning believer. Peter, I've prayed that your faith doesn't fail, and when you are back on board, feed my flock, serve my kingdom. One of the great truths of this image of the shepherd is the fact that the sheep always have a shepherd. Think about that. It's very simple, but it's very profound. The sheep always have a shepherd. Remember, the sheep don't come home. The shepherd goes and finds them. My friend, wherever you are this morning, at a distance from God, whether you're a sinning unbeliever or you're a sinning believer, Christ wants to bring you back. Maybe these circumstances have been set by him to break your will. Maybe it's through the rebuke of a friend. Maybe the goodness of God is calling you to repentance, but in some way, in some measure, the shepherd is on your heels, and he wants you back, and he'll take you back because the sheep always have a shepherd. There is more grace in God's heart this morning for you than there is sin in your life. Jesus Christ didn't come into the world to rub it in. He came into the world to rub it out. Let me finish with another story about a hymn and the man that wrote it. Come Thy Fount. It was written by a man called Robert Robinson. And later in life, having wrote that, he got away from the Lord. He stopped going to church. He stopped serving. He was at a bad place. And according to a story I read, one day he was walking the streets when he waved down a carriage, a taxi of that day, and he was about to get into the taxi when he realized there was a well-dressed woman in the taxi who looked like she was going to church, and so he, he waved it by. But the woman graciously invited him in, was willing to share the taxi cab, the horse-drawn carriage with him. And as he came in and got into a conversation with her, the woman asked him his name, and he said, my name is Robert Robinson. And she said, that's so funny. You wouldn't 
it, it couldn't be true, but you wouldn't be the Robert Robinson who wrote the hymn, Come Thy Find of Every Blessing. And kind of putting his head down, he said, yes, that's me. But he says, I, I don't live that right now. That's not where I'm at. To my shame, I admit that. And he says, I would give anything to enjoy that joy that once was mine, but prone to wonder, Lord, I know it, and prone to leave the God I love. And that young woman turned to Robert Robinson and said, Ah, oh, Mr. Robinson, streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Offer him your heart. He'll take and seal it for his courts above. Oh, my friend, come back to the shepherd this morning and let him make you adequate for life and for death. Lord, we thank you for our time begun this morning in Psalm 23. We hope we have hit the reset button. We hope that this psalm, by the help of your Holy Spirit, has dawned on us with a freshness and allow the book to speak with freshness to us this morning. Oh God, as we look out on our world, we can almost imagine the Lord Jesus in heaven right now looking upon that world and saying, as he said in his day, they are sheep without a shepherd. And his heart breaks to gather them in and to bring a sense of sufficiency and a sense of security and to offer them salvation. Oh God, we thank you this morning. You are the shepherd that stills the sheep. You are the shepherd that saves the sheep. Still the hearts of men today. Save the lives of men today through your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we pray and ask in his great name. Amen. A prayer for men and women to find their peace and protection in the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. You're listening to Philip DeCourcy here on Know the Truth. You can hear today's complete unedited message titled More Than Adequate when you listen online at ktt.org. Or if you're looking for a way to listen while you're out and about, download the KTT app or add the KTT podcast to your playlist. Just search for Know the Truth with Philip DeCourcy on your mobile device. We're grateful that we can bring Know the Truth to you each and every day, and it's all thanks to faithful listeners who support this Bible teaching ministry. We hope you'll catch the vision and join the team as one of our Truth Ambassadors. Truth Ambassadors make a regular monthly donation to keep Know the Truth on the air and on the web, sending out Philip's clear and convicting messages that always point to Jesus Christ. And when you give a generous one-time gift or sign up for a monthly auto gift, you'll also receive helpful resources for your walk of faith. In May, you'll receive Tim Challey's book, Seasons of Sorrow, The Pain of Loss and the Comfort of God. Combining personal narrative, sound theology, and beautiful writing, this book shows readers how God is sovereign and good in loss and how you can pass through times of grief while keeping your faith and how biblical doctrine can work itself out even in life's most difficult situations. Request a copy for yourself or for a friend in need. Call 888-644-8811 or give online at ktt.org. And when you give a donation of $40 or more, you'll not only receive this book, but you'll also receive direct online access to this month's entire Psalms of Trust series, along with a helpful companion guide, the Psalms of Trust personal devotional booklet filled with personal insight from Pastor Philip. Again, call 888-644-8811 or give online at ktt.org. You can also write to us at Know the Truth, Post Office Box 30250, Anaheim Hills, California, 92809. Or give online at ktt.org. I'm your host, Wayne Shepherd. Be sure to come back tomorrow when Philip DeCourcy continues unpacking the promises of Psalm 23. That's on the Friday edition of Know the Truth. Today's program was produced and sponsored by Know the Truth Incorporated. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Music